It's Friday, November 18th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. Assessments of this month's election results are well underway. Missouri House Democrats picked up three seats. The party's strategy of consistently speaking with voters during the campaign could be one reason for that increase. They need to know that people are, um, you know, aligning with their values. And if they won't even answer a simple survey question in the Kansas City Star, um, how are they going to behave as an elected official? Some political observers also say the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade could have been a significant factor. And another reason for the Democratic Party's election success in the Missouri House might rest with new district maps. St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Kellogg reports. Missouri House Democrats will see a boost in their numbers this upcoming session. The gain of three seats comes after the implementation of a new district map, which was agreed upon by a bipartisan commission earlier in the year. The new map created more competitive districts in the state, including in the Kansas City, Springfield, and Columbia areas. Despite the gains, Republicans still hold a supermajority in the chamber. Anita Mannion, an assistant professor of political science at the University of Missouri-St. Louis, said Democrats won 13 of the 20 competitive seats this past election. The Democrats were able to field some good candidates and campaigns, and also had some strong get-out-the-vote efforts. Manning also said Democrats' ability to engage voters in person this election cycle, as opposed to virtually in 2020, also likely helped them this election season. In Jefferson City, I'm Sarah Kellogg, St. Louis Public Radio. A St. Louis area attorney who previously pleaded guilty to federal tax crimes has once again been accused of tax fraud. A federal grand jury in Charlotte, North Carolina, has indicted Michael Cohn, another attorney at his firm in Clayton, and a North Carolina insurance agent. They are accused of helping clients file false tax returns, which allegedly caused the IRS to lose millions of dollars. The trio is also accused of defrauding an insurance company of $200 million. Cohn lost his Missouri law license after admitting to the 2002 fraud charges. It was reinstated in 2011. The latest scheme allegedly began that same year. Local health care providers in Illinois are dealing with a big surge in severe childhood respiratory infections. Araceli Gomez-Aldana reports. Illinois Public Health Director Samir Varad said only 9% of pediatric ICU beds are available statewide. But earlier this week, that number was as low as 4%. Even during the worst moments of the COVID-19 pandemic, we saw nothing like this. In fact, we never dropped below 50%. The current surge that we are seeing is putting a significant strain on our hospital systems. Doctors are concerned because the spike in RSV cases is bumping up against this year's flu season. Health officials are urging people to get flu and COVID vaccines, wear masks, and keep children home when they're sick. I'm Araceli Gomez Aldana. St. Louis officials want a lawsuit claiming a man was mistakenly imprisoned in a city jail to be tossed out. Michael Jones and three other men sued the city in 2021 for wrongful imprisonment in the medium security jail known as the workhouse. Jones was in jail for nearly eight months. Post-Dispatch reports the lawsuit claims the St. Louis Public Defender's Office notified city officials that Jones was mistakenly being held, but they did not release him. Lawyers for the city say the case should be dropped because St. Louis has qualified immunity and the case falls outside the statute of limitations. The judge has not ruled. The Missouri Botanical Garden is expanding its global conservation strategy, adding teams of scientists to address the effects of climate change on plant life. The garden will hire four scientists and four directors who will focus on biodiversity loss, the effects that climate change has on plant life around the globe, and food security. Senior Vice President of Science and Conservation Gunther Fischer says studying plant genetics in the wild is essential to making sure everyone has enough food. Studying the diversity of crop wild relatives will help to address food security because crop wild relatives could be used to breed, for example, climate resilient crop varieties. The garden will also hire scientists to lead conservation efforts for Madagascar and Latin America. St. Louis has lost a soul music great. Roland Johnson died this week. He was 74. The influential musician performed for five decades. St. Louis Public Radio's Chad Davis reports. The soul vocalist shared the stage with local blues and R&B grades throughout his life. Johnson's albums Imagine This and Set Your Mind Free showcased his singing and songwriting. 
Fans could often see him perform at Beale on Broadway and Hammerstones. Family members say Johnson was a humble artist, but also a perfectionist. Johnson's sister, Carolyn Stafford, says he found his calling as a boy after winning a singing contest. That was really like his whole entire life. He loved music, and he loved to please people. He loved how, you know, the effects that he got from, from actually uh, entertaining. Funeral services are pending. Stafford hopes to plan a jam session in honor of her brother. I'm Chad Davis, St. Louis Public Radio. An iconic support organization for service members and their families has quietly been closing dozens of airport lounges and on-base hospitality centers. But the USO is also opening others, including some in the military's most remote locations. Jay Price reports for the American Homefront Project. The 81-year-old USO is known for traditions like care packages, airport lounges for transiting troops, and celebrity entertainment tours. But it has modern challenges. Its budget is down, in part because the number of Americans and potential donors with ties to the military has been shrinking. And it's dealing with shifts in where troops are deployed and what they need in the digital age. We're trying to provide an impact in the places and for those service members that need us the most. USO Chief Operating Officer Alan Reyes says the changes are part of a long-range strategic plan. It will close about 40 of those centers where troops can rest, grab a cold soda, play games, and watch TV, many of them at smaller domestic airports. But it's opening 28 new centers, several in places where stress is especially high. We do pride ourselves on the fact that we have, as a global organization, the opportunity to reach millions and millions of service members and families, but we wanna make sure that we are reaching those that need us the most. And oftentimes they are in more remote locations. Many of the new centers are in Eastern Europe where troops are deployed in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Other new sites include Fort Irwin and the Mojave Desert and the military's most isolated installation, Thule Air Force Base in Northern Greenland, where temperatures can drop under 20 below and there's total darkness for months each winter. So one that is fairly remote away from a lot of creature comforts. The USO's mission is to boost morale by keeping service members connected with their families, home, and country. In short, it's a mental health organization. And uh, I could attest to that because I was dealing with depression. Sergeant Darian Wolf visits the bustling Fort Bragg USO almost daily. He was hanging out in a lounge area one recent day, sipping a Sprite, as other soldiers used computers, played video games, or just sprawled on a couch watching TV. Just coming here got me a chance to kind of get out of that old, you know, kind of relax. Definitely feels like home, so that's why I kept coming back. He found the same comfort in Poland on a recent deployment. The 82nd Airborne Division soldiers had been ordered to leave their phones at home, but the USO provided secure call centers as well as its usual array of couches, games, and snacks. My whole team was gone uh, every week. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, today we're at Long Bend, 17 miles northeast of Saigon. Bob Hope. You can't mention the USO without at least a nod to its most famous touring act. I don't care if Charlie is watching or I'm giving away military secrets. We're on live TV today and we need the rating. <laughs> that was 1969, and Hope, who did USO shows for half a century, was performing for a crowd of thousands. The USO is still sending celebrities out on tour, but it's added another approach. And if you're a soccer fan or football, as they say in Europe, you're going to enjoy our guest today. Star that recent guest was U.S. soccer star Christian Pulisic. Instead of putting him on tour, the USO set up a live video appearance. We have two friendly matches coming up here in the next week to get us prepared for the World Cup. Pulisic, in Germany, chatted with soldiers in Turkey, Kuwait, and Qatar online, where Reyes says young troops are used to spending time. That does not mean we're going to stop sending tours to bases and places as well, but we now have a way to serve in both capacities. The video meetups aren't the same as joining the crowd at a live USO show, but Reyes says they can be more intimate, allowing personal connections with the celebrities. And they still serve that USO mission, cheering up troops who are far from home. I'm Jay Price reporting. 
That story was produced by the American Homefront Project, a public media collaboration that reports on American military life. Funding comes from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Before wrapping up, St. Louis Cardinals Paul Goldschmidt is this year's National League Most Valuable Player. The first baseman is the first Cardinal to win the honor since Albert Pujols in 2008 and 2009. Goldschmidt was among the league leaders this season in batting average, home runs, and runs batted in. It's the first MVP award for the 35-year-old. The stigma that as you get older, you're going to keep getting worse. I mean, nobody likes that. They don't like being told you can't do something. So it's definitely motivation to, I want to find a way to still be a, a good or a great player and, and perform and, and try to win. And, 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 you know, that's in the back of your mind. And, you know, just try to continue to do that and find ways to get better um, even as I get older. Our thanks to MLB Network for the audio. Cardinals players have been named MVP 18 times. That's second only to the New York Yankees. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. Have a great weekend. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com.